to our dearest mum, at this time our thoughts are with you, for it is you who has been his partner in life all these years. Our dad was a firm believer that we children should be independent, get out and see the world and make our lives for ourselves. This he encouraged us to do. However, I believe that deep down, Ken would have liked nothing more than to have his family around him all the time and spoil us rotten at every opportunity. But he followed his principles and encouraged us to both travel and live abroad. Perhaps we feel, as Dad used to joke, it was so that his children would be strategically placed around the world to accommodate his future world travel. We love the quirks and inconsistencies in our dad's nature too. They were ever varied and the source of much amusement. My eldest brother, Andrew, remembers an incident concerning his first yachting experience as a young boy of about seven or eight. <coughs> Having briefly mentioned yachting the night before, Andrew arrived home from school the next day to find dad and a P-class yacht in the front paddock. After depositing Andrew on the Parramatta side of Pawatahanui Inlet, Ken gave him the briefest of instructions. He was pushed off unceremoniously from the shore with Ken's boot and the words, go yachting, my son. <laughs> After some time floundering around the centre of the inlet and finally making a beeline for the homeward shore, Ken eventually retrieved the intrepid young yachter, who was never to be seen in the P-class again. Of course, we all knew it was Dad who wanted to be the yachty, not Andrew. Rightly or wrongly, Dad believed that the three of us could do most things. At different times, between the ages of five and seven years, we were all expected to take over the controls of the farm Land Rover as Dad leapt out to feed hay, no matter what hazards lay ahead. As you can probably imagine, this resulted in Ken repairing several gates, fences and posts, not to mention the Land Rover. As youngsters, Ken made us feel that everything we did on the farm was important and helpful, whereas in reality our efforts were probably more a hindrance than a help. Our dad was a tireless playmate and at times a kid at heart. We often wondered who enjoyed the hijinks the most, Ken or us. Most of all, he gave us the security of knowing when push came to shove, he would move heaven and earth for us. This devotion was evidenced by the fact that he sacrificed his strong desire to enter politics so that he could spend some time at home with us his children in our early years. Dad was exceedingly generous, just a big softy at heart. Many times Ken and Joy would house, feed and find work for those people more needy than themselves. Ken openly adored his mother and would do anything for her. He admired his mum's courage, strength and amazing generosity wonderful qualities which I believe he inherited from her. He, he enjoyed Gran's company and would regale us with stories after each visit. Ken was very proud of you, Gran. On a personal level, my dad was everything to me. He was my strength, my conscience and my motivation. Ken's death has left a huge void in all our lives. We love him with all our hearts and we have lost our gentle giant.